Good morning, everyone. Hi, guys. So today's episode is all about our wonderful greenhouse. greenhouse. <laughs> this wasn't uh, practiced, it was. <laughs> Not planned. Not planned. The last year in our seeding episode, we showed you uh, how we uh, seeded our plants and made a, a few, a few tiny, tiny mistakes, tiny. like murdering a little more than half of them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we've learned a lot since then, which is why we decided to do a whole episode about our greenhouse, because yeah. uh, this is really like a linchpin of our system of being able to get plants into the ground sooner, uh, as long as those plants can survive. So this episode is not about seeding, but it's about how to keep them healthy, happy. And it's as if we're like the dads of the seedings. Mm -hmm. And because we work in a greenhouse, so we kind of green dads. Green dads. I get it. I get it. That's green good. Dad. That's clever. And when you, you, you translate it is... Pervert. Literally, per pervert. Pervert. For, for, the Engl for our... Oh, we have the same word in English. Pervert. It's pervert. pervert. So he's a pervert. So last year we explained that the seedling themselves, you put them, uh, you sprout them in a seed starter mix that is not rich but very fluffy and retain water. And after that, you transplant them in the rich soil to grow fast. As you can see in this example, we moved this tomato two weeks ago. And you see the difference between those that are still in their seed starter mix and those that has been moved, the difference of growth. And now we need to put them in a very good condition. And for that, we have three criteria, temperature, light, and humidity. So we balance those three things and we do it all with the help of our incredible greenhouse. You did it again. <laughs> yes, I did it again. <laughs> I read in your mind. So for the heat, it's pretty easy. Uh, when your uh, greenhouse is directly under the sunlight, uh, everything is going to heat very, very fast. And uh, what you need to keep an eye on is that the temperature doesn't go above 35 uh, Celsius, 95 Fahrenheit. And so for that, we got a device that measure the temperature and the humidity and is connected to our phone by Bluetooth or by Wi-Fi and just alert us if the temperature goes above what the setting we put on. And then when it reaches the limit I want to, I just come out, I open the doors, uh, I open the windows and I let it aerate and usually the temperature is going to remain uh, in that area like between 30 and 35. During the night, we need also to keep uh, a good temperature. For sure, we want to keep it 100% above freezing point and if we can, also above uh, 10 degrees Celsius. But how do we do to keep this uh, as warm as possible at night, around 4 or 5 p.m. I go and I close uh, the uh, windows and the door right away to try to keep the, the warmth as long as possible. Something that we decided to use is in this bucket, we filled it with uh, water. We may maybe have like 30 gallon of water in it. And we are using the aquarium heater for fishes. So right now it's around 2 p.m. And the temperature of the water is 31.5 Celsius and in Fahrenheit it's 88.7. And so basically the heat is going to be released slowly during the entire night, which is going to raise the, the temperature of the greenhouse of two, three, four degrees compared to the temperature outside. To help them during the night to keep a nice temperature, we are using those heating mats. So that's also a winner. Oh, and that's how we try to find a balance of not too hot during the day and not too cold during the night. How hot does it feel right now? It's so hot. Uh, my God, I think it feels like very tropical here. I think I'm going to remove my glove. The second criteria is light. Uh, fortunately, when it comes to light, nature does all the work. We have a sun. I don't know if you knew this. Our solar system has a sun in the middle. Solar, sun. There we go. I'm going to start that one over from the top. That one. It's not my best. Yeah. So the second criteria for the perfect growing conditions is light. 
Uh, fortunately, like I said before, the sun does most of the work for us. We just have to find the right spot to let the sun do its job. So when you're placing a greenhouse, you really got to find the sunniest spot in your garden. And that might change between summer and winter. So for instance, during the summer months, we keep this greenhouse in our upper garden in a spot that is in full sun. But in the winter, that spot gets pretty shady. So we bring it down here where it's also a little bit closer to our house. It's also the sunniest spot in the garden. Now it's really important to study your backyard carefully because sometimes you don't realize there's trees, there's obstacles, there's other things that might come in the way at different times of day. For example, if we only move four feet in this direction, we would be in full and complete shade. And this would be a terrible place to put a greenhouse. So don't put a greenhouse here. Keep it over there. <laughs> the third criteria is humidity. The air has a capacity to hold water, but that amount changes with the temperature of the air. So more the air is hot and more water it's going to be able to hold and more the air is cold and less water it's going to be able to hold. So that's where I introduce for you VPD. So what's VPD? Vapor pressure deficit is the difference between the amount of moisture in the air and how much moisture the air can hold when it is saturated. The ideal range is from 0 0.45 to 1.25 kPa, 0 0.8 and 0 0.95, 0 0.85. Oh my god, it's so scientific. I have to I have to I have to make it easy. I have to make it way more easy. It's time for America's favorite game show. Guess the Seasley. Hi. Hi. So today I have a surprise for you. Okay. It's a PlayStation 5. What? I don't play video games, but okay. So what's this one? Okay. okay I actually know the answer to this one. Okay. This is tomato because I recognize all the little cilias. The next one. Um, I am going to say this is definitely allium family. I think it's onions. I'm going to vote onions. We're growing shallots. Shallots and onions are the same things. Shallots just want to be onions, but they're too small. Uh, I'm one and a half out of two. Okay. Doing okay so far. This one. This one? Ooh, that's cilantro. I know cilantro from a mile away. You could put a trench coat on that cilantro. You could put a hat on that cilantro, sunglasses, a fake nose. I would still know that cilantro. And this one, by far the easiest. Don't even need, I can do this one from downtown. Take the shot. Boom. Zucchini. Ah. What? <laughs> Those are cantaloupe? Mm -hmm. I was so confident. I mean, come on, people. If you saw this, you would have said zucchini. In my defense, okay. squashes and zucchinis and melons are all in the same family. So, of course, they all look very similar. What's the family? Cucurbit? Cucurbit? So as you can see in this chart, lower is the value of the VPD, closer to zero, and the more the air is uh, saturated with water, which means more the air is humid. And higher the value is, two, three, four, and drier the air is. This area here would be the sweet spot between 0.8 and 1. At night, the VPD uh, gets very close to zero, which means uh, we, are, we have risk of uh, pathogens and uh, uh, fungal disease to uh, to appear and that's exactly what happened to us last year we watered the plant before nighttime we had not a good system to heat the greenhouse and we wake up in the morning and we find a lot of fungi on top of the the dirt and we lost a lot of plants uh, like that so at night because it's cold we first need to reduce humidity but it would also be helpful to raise the temperature and for that it's our bucket filled of water and heated by covering it i do not let the humidity raise more than it should be and this uh, raises the heat so here i kind of regulate a little bit the vpd and during the day we need to increase the humidity so for that there's different solutions first one again with this bucket i open it during the day and this is gonna evaporate some water and gonna increase the humidity uh, the second thing is we need to, to keep our plant 
uh, moist uh, because the evaporation is going to happen around the plant. And also we can use a humidifier, but we're still testing with that to see how efficient it is. And I am so sorry for this. I know it's complicated. I can definitely say that since we started the strategy, keep the bucket open during the day and close during the night, it helps with keeping better temperature at night and also uh, regulate the VPD. I still think I deserve that PlayStation. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to I'm going to sell it online so that I can <laughs> buy something I actually want.